Welcome to the third episode of The Electrical Box. Today we'll be discussing modern movies while taking a more laid-back approach. Let's get right into the discussion. So the first thing uh, that I want to talk about today is some of the new trailers, specifically the Dumbo trailer, and I know that you wanted to talk about the Incredibles 2 trailer, uh, oh, the Dumbo trailer being yes. the more recent of the two. Uh, yes. And first, I just want to play it, and then we can kind of go into it a bit more. For sure, for sure. Let's, let's, let's do this thing. May I just say that the whole tone of this trailer is creepy? It is a Tim Burton film. I mean, the music, it's like, could you have, like, steered further away from how it's supposed to sound? Look at that. Oh my god, it's a moving bale of hay. Oh no. Why are its eyes so big, though? I know, it's so, it's like, it's trying to look real, but it's so cartoony looking. It, it's it trying to make like Dumbo it's... more realistic because he can't talk, and he's an elephant, but he looks about as far from reality as possible. Yeah, he looks like if you took Dumbo from the cartoon, and then just... 3D modeled him and put realistic textures on him. It's like if you Of course they have Danny DeVito. Of course they have Danny DeVito. It's like if you took an actual elephant, baby elephant, and you Photoshop liquefied tooled it. Yeah. Exactly. To have the bigger yeah. eyes and ears. Yeah, I mean it's like one like once the bigger I I could kind of see the rest all looking kind of realistic. I could see it all being somewhat. Well, even his proportions are weird. The mm -hmm. ears are a given. I mean, that's what Dumbo is, but it's like his eyes are unrealistic and his stubby legs like real baby elephants don't have that stubby of legs. And people will say that you know, oh, it's supposed to look like Dumbo from the cartoons. Isn't that what you want? It's like, no. If you're going to go for live action, it should feel like a live action film. It shouldn't feel like it's a live action film starring a, an animated CGI hybrid thing. Yeah, exactly. Take, for example, uh, Beauty and the Beast. I mean, the live action one. I mean... The beast was almost as far away as you could possibly get from the cartoon one. It's like, I mean, you had there were similarities, obviously, but it was just like it wasn't like, hey, this is this was his own version, at least of the looks, and it looked like it could somewhat be a real thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You get what I'm saying? Having never watched, uh. Beauty and the Beast or the live action remake, I cannot say. Okay, well now now we gotta show you. Just at least a side by side comparison. We gotta we gotta show you this. Like the cartoon versus the live action. There's a very big difference. Well yeah, but the question is, does the difference make sense? I say it looks like it looks like it could be a real thing. Um Side by side. Uh, also, beast. what is it with Tim Burton and directing remakes? Like, wasn't he? Have... Didn't he direct uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory as well? Yes, I believe so. And that mm -hmm. film kind of sucked. Eh. It wasn't that good it wasn't but it wasn't horrible that yeah 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 it wasn't horrible it just it was forgettable i think it fell fat yeah it fell flat for a lot of people it was just not very good like yeah that's a huge difference but the beast actually looks like he could be a beast 
Yeah, he looks like he could be, like, a real thing. Like, see, like... I mean, I could see that, like... I think that would actually look amazing had they, like, actually took the cartoon one and made it real. I think it still could have looked like something that could have existed. Mm -hmm. But, like, the one that they, the design they decided to go with, I think, was a a somewhat decent choice for a live action. I think it still looks very uh, animated. Which yeah. I think there is something to be said for, and really, it looks like a very human beast, to be completely honest. And I feel like they could have done it with using practical effects and makeup. Because, like, yeah. Chewbacca didn't look fake. Well, the thing is, Wookiees are real, though. Ah, so, they are, I mean, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, and look at that. That's, um... That's Pierre, and that's uh, and and uh, Cogsworth. Look at those differences. <laughs> are they supposed those to be big. alive in the live action? Because I can't tell. Well, you can see that he has little itty bitty eyes, and I'm like, you know, and you can see there's a face there, which I kind of will say that's kind of creepy looking. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just creepy that they're alive, period, but uh, I must say live-action Pierre looks uh, Much a bit less... like he might suck your soul yeah. up during the middle of the night. And maybe Cogsworth, especially with those beady little eyes. He just lo he looks more like he's supposed to be watching you. He looks like he's in constant pain. I'm not going to lie. He looks like he's just in constant pain. He's like, pain. this altered form of my human body is physically torturing me. I'm in constant pain. Yeah, that... Poor Cogsworth. At least Pierre is just like, well, at least I just get to suck, feast on the souls of mankind. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so yeah, that's that's what they look like. But yeah, so now you now you see what I'm saying. It's mm -hmm. like that's something I could actually see kind of being adapted well. Yeah. But with Dumbo, at the very <laughs> the thing that kind of tipped me over the edge with the Tum Dumbo trailer is just when he actually flew off in the end. I'm just like, you see, when when you deviate that much from the laws of physics mm -hmm. in a movie. I think it irritates more people than not. <laughs> I don't know. Like, you can do that in an, in an animated film, but when you take it to live action, it's much harder to pull off in any reasonable fashion. Yeah, I mean, people are just going to take it. They're just There's going to be those people that are just... And actually, those people are at least a little bit nicer than us because they're not gonna think about it as much as we do but uh no know, probably not like yeah but you know you got the you got the people that are just like ah it's dumbo okay well he flies in the cartoon or in the book as well or does he fly in the book oh it's based know. on a book? a book i didn't know yeah, that i'm pretty i am pretty darn sure well most of what disney does is based off of books well most this is true of it. Yeah, I th yeah, I'm pretty sure Dumbo is a book, but I don't remember if he flies or not. Leave it to Disney to change something that drastic. Oh, yes. I mean, you know, Pinocchio is a completely different story than what it used to be. Like, he was a murderous, evil, like, insane, like, he's talking to himself. He kills Jiminy Cricket within, like, the first five minutes of meeting him by just crushing him with a shoe yeah, I Dang. can understand the creative license. Uh, they took a little bit of creative license. They're like, mm. But choose a different story. My gosh. What can you expect? It's like it came from the bike, the Brothers Grimm era, if not made by the Brothers Grimm, which I don't remember if that is a thing or not. But, you know, those those stories back then were meant to scare kids. They were meant to scare, scare kids, which I don't understand why. Cinderella, 
her sisters, when they were trying to put on the shoes, they would cut off a toe or whatever and a heel to try to, to fit their foot inside it. <laughs> and and um, at the very end of it, after Cinderella gets the guy, birds come down and peck out her sister's eyes. What the and make them blind? Why? Why I don't would you know. do this? I Why? don't know. I didn't do it. I'm I'm not involved with this. That stuff was barely part of my childhood to begin with. Now <laughs> it's like what little there was is now just horribly scarred for life. Yeah, I'm these these stories, they're they're definitely way darker than a lot of people. I know a lot or, of them are darker, Disney but I didn't know they them. I didn't know freaking Cinderella went that dark. Almost every fairy tale has gone very dark. Those are just a few I remember. Like uh like in the Little Mermaid, like she she doesn't get the guy in the end and she dies and turns to sea foam. <laughs> you should see Ben, he's just completely just his face is completely crumpled up. He doesn't know how to register this information. It's okay, Ben. Get in the pretty white van. There, There's people that can help you with this. They'll help me with something, that's for sure. All right. Dumbo. Uh, Dumbo is something. Dumbo, the it's Dumbo a thing. movie. I'm questioning it. I, I showed it to my mom, and she's like, oh, I'm probably going to love it. And I'm like, eh, if I had to guess, if I had to, I would say I'm. it's probably, I'm probably going to think it's going to suck. Mm -hmm. Whether it's going to be true or not, well, has yet to be decided. I guess I'll have to wait till next year. All right, let's, uh, let's take a look at the Incredibles 2 trailer, because I don't I remember what the basic plot is about, but... Again, I need a refresher. I need a refresher of why they're ruining my childhood. I, okay, this is the one I kind of have faith in. I kind of don't and kind of do. All at the same time. Oh. Did you wash your hands? With soap? <laughs> Did you dry them? Wow, dude, he just shoved that whole thing in his mouth, dude. He does have a big mouth. Good point. I, yeah. The elephant in the room. What elephant? Come on, new job. It's time to make some wrong things right. Help me bring supers back into the sunlight. Change people's perceptions about superheroes, and Elastigirl is our best play. Better than me? <clears throat> Whoa! I like mom's new job! Bye, sweetie. I'll watch the kids, no problem. That's not the way you're supposed to do it, Dad. They want us to do it. I don't way. know that way. Why would they change math? Math uh, is math. Okay, math Dad. is math. Hello? Hey, honey. Everything's great. <laughs> Is she having adolescence in Jack Jack? She's in excellent health. Oh, what the? Num num cooking. Oh, no. Cooking. <laughs> Whoa, Daddy. That is freaky. You know it's crazy, right? To help my family, I gotta leave it. To fix the law, I gotta break it. You've got to. So our kids can have that choice. Thank you, young man. Combustion imminent? What does that mean? Ah! It means fire, Robert. The screen slider interrupts this program for an important announcement. Suit up. It might get weird. I'll be there ASAP. Where you going? You don't talk to Samuel Jackson like that. 
he'll go out whenever he want. Okay, I'm just gonna admit right from the get go, I'm a huge fan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have to admit, that looks much better than the previous trailers, which made it look completely like just Mr. Mom. Yeah. Minus Michael Keaton. But yeah, okay, I can I can see the dynamic in this one working. Yeah. Well, and like, at the very end, it's like, I'm kind of happy the way they did format this trailer, because it's like, obviously there is going to be a threat, but they saved it till the very end, and they showed basically nothing of it. Mm -hmm. so that's what I kind of like about it so they're playing it the right way they're not just giving us what the movie's about mm -hmm. you know what I mean which really it's funny <sighs> because The Incredibles wasn't about The Incredibles it was about the family it wasn't about saving the world it was about the family that was mm -hmm. saving the world which was the beautiful thing behind the film. Well, I kind of, yeah, the whole, the whole premise was like, of the last time was like, Bob, he was like, you know, going through this midlife crisis of like, he just wanted to be, he wanted to be reliving his days of being a superhero. And it's like, you know, it's illegal. So it's like he has this whole thing going on where he's like, he understands that he shouldn't be doing it, but it's just like he, he just, he can't help himself. It's like who he is, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, and, you know, you know, you, you could tell that everyone understood. It was just, you know, it was difficult for them to get to her, get to him. And it's, it's just, it's... It was it was a it was a cool show. It was funny. It was serious. It had nice heartfelt moments. It actually felt like there was like an actual threat. It was like it was a package, dude. It was actually a really good movie. Mm -hmm. It's probably did Pixar's not, best. I would say it might not have worn. I did, would say it did not need a second movie. But if they honestly have a good story to tell, all the power to them. It's like if they waited this long to make a sequel so that they could get a good story, mm -hmm. it was Which well worth the it wait. It sounds like they were doing. It sounded like they were actually doing a good thing rather than just doing a cash grab. Mm -hmm. Which, That's what it sounds like. On one hand, I feel like Toy Story is one film away from being a cash grab. If they make a fourth, it becomes a cash grab series. Three is a Okay, one is good, two is, there, there's a saying here. Not helping you with this one. <laughs> it's like you're all on your own, Ben. Yeah, I can't, I can't help you with this one. I can't help you any further. Like, okay, one film is good. There are... A lot of films that never get any sequels or prequels that are absolutely fine just as it is. Mm -hmm. There are films that have a single sequel that do really well. And then there are sequels that are just total disappointments. Yeah. I feel like 3 is a good... If you're going to go for the film series, go for a trilogy. Yeah, and honestly, I think... It's like a perfect trilogy. Like all of them are good movies. I mean, the one movie is obviously better than the other, you know, but it's just like, but as a series, like the trilogy as a whole, it's a, like a wonderful, wonderfully put together mm -hmm. trilogy. It actually look, it at least looked like they put thought into it. Yeah. And they didn't hack a lot of the things. It was just like, it was a, they were all good. And any changes they did make, it was just like, you know, in the third movie it was sad because you lost Bo Peep and you lost all these 
some of these characters that, like, you know, it's just like, eh. I mean, they weren't big. Well, if you really think about it, a lot of people were, like, upset about that, apparently. It was just like, I can't believe they took Bo Peep out. But I'm like, if you really think about it, she never was really there to begin with. She was a thing, but she wasn't really she was, a thing. Yeah, she was just, she was there, but yeah, like, she was just in the background. She was a background character. The the soldiers, they were just a background thing, you know, they weren't anything incredibly special. I mean, they kind of helped the movie feel a little bit uh, more put together. And, like, you know, it was like these characters have a little more to them than just themselves, you know. Mm -hmm. That's what I think those characters kind of really helped represent. But now it was like, but it's kind of, it was kind of wonderful how they tied it all up. Because it was just kind of like... They, I, the, the theme with the third movie, it was like, it's change, mm -hmm. change, 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 change. So it's like, you see this drastic of like drop in characters and it's just kind of like, you're kind of left there speechless, you know? Yeah. And it's like. And I think that kind of a, like, this is sad. a lot of Pixar films kind of start you off that way. They start you off with this nice, happy thing, and then as the opening continues, like, up, it just, it ends you in just, like, this depressed state. You understand why Carl is so, such a crotchety old man. Yeah. Because, like, he lost his wife, and, you know, that was the love of his life. Mm. And just everything's gone to crap. So you understand where he's coming from a bit more than you would if he was just a crotchety old man. But dang, by the end of that, if you don't feel like your heart's been torn around. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in Toy Story 3, like, the whole, like, they're <clears throat> about to be uh, uh, destroyed, you know. It's like that last, like, you know, they're all holding hands and stuff like that. I will say I did shed a tear. I must say I did. I like how this has turned into we're just fanboying over Pixar films. I am I. Okay, Pixar is one of those movie companies that's just kind of like, yeah, they mess up, but it's like they've done a lot of things right, though. Mm-hmm. I don't. Okay. Is it fair to say that they've mostly done more right than wrong? If we don't consider Cars 2 to be a stain larger than anything else on the platter, then sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure, we'll go with that one. Yeah, I mean, I think it's... I think for the most part, it's come off pretty good. No one has much to gripe about Pixar, from the sounds of it. It's just like everyone seems to enjoy what they produce and put out there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, I can't really... I hope that I Pixar can't... can separate themselves from Disney, honestly. Well, it sounds like they've tried to as much as humanly possible, but now, but now Disney is trying to be Pixar, which I don't really understand. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is my thing. Disney, you should stick with 2D. I feel. And leave the 3D... 2D and live action, I would say. They do do some yeah. good live action. But then Disney... Yeah. I have a lot of gripes with some of Disney's more recent adventures. First of all, they completely screwed with copyright law and made it all suck and nobody knows what the crap is going on anymore. Uh, secondly, they seem to be screwing up Star Wars. Oh, yeah, they're screwing it up big time. And thirdly, they seem to be screwing up Marvel a bit. A, a bit. Yeah, yeah. Marvel films have been good, but not great, but good enough. Yeah, they've been just coasting. Mm -hmm. They've just been coasting. That's how, that's how Marvel goes. And then you either have these really crappy ones, um, you know, Thor 2... Uh, <laughs> or you have these really great movies like Captain America Civil War. And Thor 3. <laughs> I, 
I I don't know anything about Thor three. Thor I, Ragnarok I was actually a pretty decent film. It was very laid back and funny, but it didn't take itself too seriously. But yeah. what it did take seriously, they actually did decently well. Yeah. But I feel like uh, the Last Jedi put too much of that Marvely forced humor into Star Wars and ruined the feel of the film in a lot of places, and a lot of the plot just didn't quite make sense. But I don't want to go into it too much because the other people have done it way better. And spoilers. Well, yeah. What I'll say is that although we gave the new you Toy the Story new Star 3, Wars spoilers just like a few minutes ago oh uh, wow maybe we'll just flash spoiler <laughs> warning jump to here if you don't want to hear spoilers it's, actually we could do that for this too yeah whatever um well i don't want to go i don't want to have i don't want to go into depth with the star wars but i just want to say it's like i think they have focused too much on comedy mm-hmm in these two new movies, seven and eight, it's like if you actually watch the original trilogy, it's like yes, they made sarcastic comments, they did make jokes, but it's like it was to a very, it was kept to a minimum. It was very much in universe comedy instead of out of universe comedy, which I think is the important difference. The comedy was that's kind of... from the characters rather than from the... It, the comedy didn't feel like it was something that the writers put in there. Like, slapstick is very much from the writers, whereas a sarcastic offhand comment from one of the characters is in-universe comedy. I don't know if that's the mm. right term. There's probably a term for it, but... Yeah, but we'll go with that. We'll go with that. If If someone cares enough, they'll correct you. So they'll correct us probably if someone cares enough um but yeah yeah i mean it's just i feel like that's how a lot of movies are doing it these days and they're just to me that just seems kind of lazy it's like for some reason movies just can't be good anymore unless they have a never ending spew of just sarcastic comments or like jokes it's like nothing can be really serious it's either too way too serious or it's like not serious enough here's the thing though i like a good serious film but yeah you have to balance the seriousness with a few comedy with a, a few jokes but it can't be forced. It has to work with everything else. Mm -hmm. But then you have comedies yeah. that are just constant jokes and none of them work. Okay. I'll just say I have not watched the 2016 Ghostbusters, nor did I really want to. I might rent it just to say I've seen it, but then never watch it again. But from what I understand, from what I've seen of it, I'm like, this is complete garbage. Because all they do is these stupid jokes. They do the kinds of jokes where it's just like, you say something and they're just like, what did you mean by that? Well, I was just saying this. And they're just like, well, pro you shouldn't say that. And then they're like, well, I meant, I didn't mean it that way. And then they just go for like five minutes just say, talking about how they, this person shouldn't have said that mm -hmm. that way and it's just to me that's just lazy it's it's not good writing well and from the sounds of it like the producer and director just kind of just let the actors take complete control of everything but like that's the original not, ghost that's not yeah, a good he way don't, to make a film <laughs> Even if they're comedians, I don't care if they're even comedians, just don't give them complete full reign. They need direction. They're mm -hmm. actors. They're not directors. Yeah. They're they're actors. They need direction. And, you know, but, you know, so they're just going off trying to make these jokes. Mm-hmm. And most of them just fall flat. And then the jokes that they do make... 
that are actually funny, they automatically... Wow, I keep bumping my microphone. Okay, how about I don't do that anymore? Okay, but yeah, they just... They ruin it instantly. They just ruin it. Like, the instant they're done making this funny joke and you're just kind of chuckling to yourself, they're just like... It just flops. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I haven't actually watched it fully, so I can't speak fully from experience, but... That's what I've seen so far, but you know, yeah, I'm I'm not gonna continue anymore on it because I don't want to sound like an uneducated weirdo. I suppose something else I've noticed is that why are all films remakes? Like the few films you have that are original, they tend to be pretty decent. Well, no, they're not reboots anymore. They're called soft reboots. Mm, yes, in universe reboots they're... like the new Star Trek. Yeah. Because that definitely yeah. didn't go horribly wrong. Okay, the thing. Okay, the thing is with the new Star, the new Star Wars. Yeah, I have nothing to say about it. I don't even know why I was going there. I have nothing to say about. I don't know. It. I don't know why you brought up Star Wars when I said Star Trek. Yeah, I I'm pretty sure I heard Star Trek after. <laughs> started speaking okay star trek is that okay the thing with the new star trek movies is that they're not even somewhat close to the technology that the original series had which is fine but you need to scale the rest no it's not fine ben it's not fine it's in the same universe but if it's you're gonna not say it's in, in the, the same, same universe. universe but it's not it's an in-universe reboot it's a different timeline you could but they, update... they use the same per they're using the same cast and it's using the same technology like you can see in the pictures that they're using of them you see the technology in the background which is so severely less superior to their current thing so what are they going reverting back like, what the crap? Are they going back to steam eventually? Like, what? The further they get along, they're just going to go back to coal and then steam and then whatever? <sighs> I'm fine with them updating it to be more realistic towards what we would expect the technology to look and act like versus uh, what it was in the 60s because it's probably not going to be anything like what it was in the 60s. But I think it is also important to keep it relative to the rest of Star Trek. Because there is a timeline in Star Trek for the technology. And I think some of the problems come from, like, the... Um, I don't remember the specific name of it. The new Star Trek series that CBS was putting on that everybody, almost everybody, hates. Uh, and one of the reasons being that the technology looks way newer than it should. That's what I'm saying, dude. I... Okay, I will say I'm okay with the movies more doing it than I am with the TV show because once you do a TV show and you say it's in the same continuity, I'm just saying you should be hanged. <laughs> you should be crucified. I think that some TV show movies work and some movie TV shows work. Yeah, But you have I'm... to do it in a very specific way for it to work. All I know is... Is that just don't do any more prequels? <laughs> <laughs> if you're gonna make the technology look more modern than it was back then, do not make any more prequels. I'm just saying, if you can't help yourself, mm -hmm. I don't mind if you do some things, but if you can't help yourself but make it look more modern, then I'm sorry, just don't do any more prequels or make an alternate timeline, which I com I'm completely fine with if had it actually been stated it's an alternate timeline but they're trying to really make it seem at least in the movies that's within the same continuity mm -hmm. they're, they're trying to make it sound like that it might not be I'll, I'll, I'll take your word for it it's probably not but i'm just saying make it more clear then because you're using you're you're taking pictures of the original cast you're taking leonard nimoy saying he's spock in the movies, and I'm like, but from a different timeline. 
Does it say it's from another timeline? Yes, I don't that is that, that is the. I don't remember that, that is movie. The whole plot actually point went of the first one is that so they went through the black hole, and the timeline was changed because Old Spock wasn't there originally. Mm. So the entire timeline has been changed, and it's an alternate timeline where Vulcan uh, dies. Well, that's cool. <laughs> that's. Hmm. <laughs> I don't remember much of that movie. All I know is that I went to the movie theater and I was like, oh, there's ships flying around. <laughs> and A.A. A. Abrams f- solar flares and really weird cool somehow it's weird but really cool camera work Mm -hmm. that he does personally i have to say i liked uh going to back to star wars for a second here the force awakens i felt was actually really well put together and left the audience with some things to think about but the follow-up for it was just all wrong it was like the whole thing was just a big joke. Mm-hmm. Luke wakes up. Oh, 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 it was just a dream. Yeah. At least it wasn't as bad. I, I can, must say the Star Wars sequels are not as bad as the prequels. Seven, no, eight might be close. Mm. There's no whiny Anakin. Okay, it might be close, but it's following way behind. It's following way behind. It's following in its footsteps, though. The Phantom Menace is like, yes, joy, the dark side of the terror of the movies. Metachlorians. (laughs) Your Metachlorian counts are off the scale. (laughs) Okay. But the prequels, you know, they're they're something else, man. Mm-hmm. They're a whole different breed of movie. It's like I didn't realize how bad they were until like I've actually watched them. And if any of you know who I'm talking about, Mr. Plinkett, which we're we're not gonna be plugging. We won't be plugging. But I'll just I'll just spew out a few points he made it's like you know their characters were just like they had nothing to them there was no goals for any of them except Darth Sidious I mean he he was evil and he loved doing it I mean mm-hmm. and he had, where it was working to an ultimate goal of taking over everything he was the only one that really had an arc in the end <laughs> he's the only <laughs> real one and he's the evil one and Yoda was pretty stupid really pointless actually the whole Jedi order was pretty useless okay Jedi period in those movies were just kind of pointless the, they didn't really do anything. The overuse of, of CGI shit. was pointless. It's like, what was yeah, wrong with Puppet things... Yoda? Puppet Yoda was amazing. Not, not, um... Not the original not, prequel Puppet Yoda, not... but the, <laughs> yeah. the trilogy Puppet Yoda was amazing. I mean, he's... <laughs> he doesn't look like a puppet. I mean, he kind of looks like a puppet, but he's believable. He's believable. Mm-hmm. He looks legit. He looks like he's actually this thing that you can believe is a little green alien that's teaching Luke how to be a Jedi. Yeah. That you can take wisdom from in his weird backward sentences. And then you look I'm at the prequels, hack. and it's just like, Yoda, you uh, you look like you put on the uh, CGI makeup today. Uh, have you done something with your hair, too? It looks odd. Yeah, at least, uh, yeah the pre the. The Phantom Menace puppet Yoda. I mean, he looked older than the original (laughs) one. And he looked more senile, too. He just did not look like he knew where he was. (laughs) His his face was completely vacant. It's just like... "Mm, Sit on Cushy's chairs, we sit. 
Yeah, and then he really had no point in the newest movie either. Really, no point. Mm, I can strike things with lightning after in the afterlight. Could have uh, could have taken down the whole empire by now, but I won't because I'm. A... <laughs> jerk what a stupid yoda stupid yoda senile old yoda i mean i okay i think it, the lightning was kind of funny but i think it was it didn't go well with uh the other force jokes like that was a joke that was a force joke that would have worked it was a forced forced one huh? but uh but i don't think that the forced uh, jokes <laughs> helped <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> anyway moving on yeah so uh, a lot of, okay star wars should have just been a trilogy and never touched again that's how i see it and george lucas should can... not have constantly messed with the original trilogy but but he but it but it's it's like poetry it rhymes yeah, after you, you after prequels, you go you look... back and correct it thirty times and republish it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if you look at the similar similarities between the first trilogy and the prequels, I mean, I mean, it's as clear as day. Um, if you if it, I would, I would say you'd have to look at it as if like saying, reduce like one percent milk is the same as whole milk <laughs> like that kind of thing yeah i'd say it's like trying to say it's the same thing <laughs> no it's like that's so off i mean i don't prefer little chunks in my drink thank you i have to much. say though i really do respect uh people like team negative one and 4k 77 who have taken uh 35 millimeter projection reels and have essentially copied or not copied but uh scanned and now are remastering silver screen edition is less remastered more it's remastered but not hd ultra smooth remastered like some bits are smoother some bits are not because it's an old piece of film and generally he cleaned it up to be watchable uh and it, it looks pretty good for a classic uh star wars scan but i'm really holding out for 4k 77 because the trailers on that look amazing chewie's face is like you can see the individual strands of hair it's insane and that's just in full hd because i don't have a 4k monitor or tv yeah i can't imagine what it looks like in 4k it's like I can see the glue on Chewie's mouth. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, from, like, you know, in Star Wars, I don't I don't think it ever would have worked had Lucas had full control. I don't think it would ever would have really worked to begin with because from what I understand, it was saved in the editing. Oh That's yeah. That's how it worked. It would have completely bombed had they just did the basic editing which that is part of why i feel like the force of no i mean the last jedi was so mm -hmm. bad is because there was too much going on at the same time with too many force jokes and i said while watching it uh, to my family whom i was watching it with that or right after that this seems to have the problems that the first cut of A New Hope had. There's too much going on at once. There's too many things happening. It's not concise. Mm -hmm. And everyone's sterile in the new movies. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's like no one shows an interest in anybody. There's absolutely no no interest. Except Rose and Finn, which is completely last minute and uh, completely ruins mm. his story arc. And it was very forced. There mm -hmm. was absolutely nothing. Like, oh, we went through a few things together. It's like, oh, I love you. I'm going to die now. But I didn't want you to die and save everyone. 
goodbye. And we're all like, and I'm just like, I hope you do die, Rose. I hope you do. <laughs> it's nothing against you personally. It's just, you're just a stupid character. It's like, okay, now you've died. Finn's going to die here in a minute if he doesn't get his behind back in the base, which is about to be blown open, and then everybody else is going to die. I... I hope Finn just gets taken out of the picture, because he's really useless. He's pointless. He is so pointless. There's nothing to him. Literally, you could have probably had a better story without him, and it was just, like, Ray and Poe. I would have been fine with him as Ray's love interest. Uh, But he's not! (laughs) but But they completely dropped that in... The Last Jedi completely dropped it. It's insane how many story arcs they completely fell flat in there and completely changed. And it's like, really? All the stuff you've built up to and you're just going to joke about it and then not touch on it again? Really, Disney? Really? Sorry. Sorry, J.J. Abrams. I will have to be taking down my In Abrams We Trust bumper sticker. That was not directed by Abrams. Oh yeah, they the changed first, yeah, the seven. Directors. Seven was seven yeah, was no. seven was good. Eight was not. Eight was bad. It's like bring Abrams. That back. makes sense. That makes sense. Yes. that makes sense. Okay, never mind. Somewhat in Abrams we trust. Somewhat in Abrams Somewhat. we trust. In Disney we discussed. I want that on a T-shirt. I don't. I do. <laughs> I kind of hate Disney. Not gonna lie. Well, Disney is kind of a monster. I will give you that. So, that was episode 3 of The Electrical Box. If you like this video, please hit that like button. If you like what we do, please hit that subscribe button. And comment down below for what you want to see and what you thought was good or bad about this episode. Uh, You can follow our Twitter over at at TEB underscore podcast. Or our Mastodon over at at TEB at pod dot social. Uh, you can subscribe to me over here and Amber Powers over here, and you can take a look at our newest video here. Thanks for watching.